Hello my soccer universe, last review video of the week and we'll keep the one with the most leaks but where I honestly also saw the least of in a way so kind of <laughs> make, make, making up for that. Um, you saw the headline, I, had, I was about to put uh, Barcelona with another third as the headline for the video but I am a little bit tired of putting all the spotlight on Barcelona. Yes, it's the team in La Liga of the big ones that I follow the most but uh, it's slightly changing again towards these guys here. I'm not wearing Atleti either, I'm wearing Real Madrid because the big game of this weekend was uh, of course uh, won by Real Madrid and therefore I want to shed some spotlight on the other Madrid team as well. As I said, I saw Sevilla Real Madrid, I saw re uh, highlights of Atletico and Barcelona and I didn't see much of the other leagues as well. So maybe we'll get uh, a very interesting Maybe shorter video. Let's see how it goes. As I said, we already had the headlines. Um, the first one is that uh, Atletico Madrid goes on top. As simple as that. And as we will see, they are actually really, really on top of the league by a mile ahead of everyone else. Uh, sec the second was Real Madrid get a very Real Madrid like win over Sevilla. Uh, Barcelona with another third against Cadiz, uh, absolutely crazy. And then in France, we have the yeah, PSG is back to winning ways uh, with a really nice goal by Moise Ken. And in Port Portugal, we have uh, still the Lisbon teams on top and Sporting dropping a little bit. get to the games. We had a big win for Celta at Athletic Club and now as the coach of Athletic Club I, I, it's similar with like Solskjaer, you always feel that he's getting fired and then he pulls out the result. Now he's again in the line of being fired but huge win for Celta that one. Uh, Levante with a 3-0 over Getafe, where Getafe also had two red cards interestingly. Uh, that gets them a little bit off the schneid because they were also looking not all that great. Sevilla against Real Madrid uh, was a rather disappointing match on many accounts. First of all, uh, the jersey match was not one that I appreciated much. Yes, Sevilla, and I still don't get the black socks, but okay, that's that classic look. But then Real Madrid basically showing up not... I was thinking at least, I don't like the pink kit, but at least you can give something a splash of color there. No, they show up with their uh, human race black kit. They have another black kit that haven't even pulled out that would have at least a little bit um, added color. I think the pink kit would have just worked fine there. And then they wear it also with the white socks. I thought this was a rather disappointing jersey matchup, but yeah, that's why I'm wearing the black one. I have to say the uh, Real Madrid human race kit in the adapted version where they have a proper crest on there is probably of all those the best looking one. Uh, it's still not a great one. To be honest. And yeah, I think Real Madrid only scored, scored one goal and they didn't even score it, but uh, it was an own goal by Bono, but uh, Vinicius Jr. and it was already in the second half. You know, the, the goal, the cross, card, the, the, the cross comes in, Bono wants to be going, Vinicius Jr. just takes the slightest of touches on there that it goes on the leg and into goal. It was a really odd goal. But I have to say that Real Madrid had chances enough to uh, score a goal themselves, so it was not necessarily a really lucky victory. Um, Sevilla late on maybe had a little bit, but honestly, this was all Real Madrid uh, from 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 get go, and this was one of those wins uh, that they had when they won the title uh, earlier this year. So uh, that uh, really really reminded me of that one and many others too. So yeah, Zidane, um, you thought he's on the ropes after this loss to Schachter, and now he gets a big win. And uh, I actually think it's Lopetegui who is getting a little bit on the ropes. Yes, he won them another uh, Europa League, but now they basically conceded the game to Chelsea in order to prepare for this game where he really wanted to put Madrid under pressure. And then such a performance, nah, that did not look good at all. Atletico though really looks good. Yes, they did not go full out uh, because, you know, we have the big game in Salzburg come, come out, but still it was a rather convincing performance. And, you know, uh, pick your, it's Lemar or it is Llorente. Uh, both of them 
when they, uh, especially when Llorente came in the second half, that completely changed the game in Atleti's favor. Uh, then Trippier actually with two two assists, one for Lemar, one for Llorente. Rather easy win for, for them uh, in a game that I was so happy to see the, uh, Valladolid playing actually in their uh, home jerseys. So that added nicely to it. And then the evening game, and I decided I'm not, not gonna come and watch it because Barcelona is not fun to watch. But, and you know, I don't want to watch a train wreck, and it is a train wreck. Uh, earlier the, in, in the week, the reports came out that Barcelona was in severe financial trouble, and it would have been better to sell Messi off and not keep him. Uh, the players will not get salaries. Uh, in January, because otherwise the uh, club goes bust. That must have motivated them big time. And yeah, you could see it in the defensive areas. I mean, already there's no, they don't have any uh, first line defenders. And yeah, already the first goal through Jimenez was not, not great. But then they kind of worked themselves into the game and they get the goal where, yes, it was a pass of Messi to, to Jordi Alba who takes a shot, but it's uh, deflected by Alcala and goes into the net. And you think, yep, yeah, Barcelona, on the way. And then from a throw-in, an all throw-in, Negredo scores the goal because they are not on the same page. I mean... Absolutely, absolutely disgusting. Uh, the only thing I have to say in Barcelona's favor is that the uh, way they chose the jerseys, I think this was the one time that the black jersey was probably better because I can see that the uh, home jersey does not work there. But uh, such a such a disgrace, Barcelona, at the moment. Uh, they are really not looking good, and we'll see they're quite off the pace at the moment as well. Uh, Granada Huesca play out a 3-3 draw, that sounds interesting. Uh, Betis in very interesting jerseys, uh, wins 2-0 at Osasuna, Villarreal, Elche, then all nil nil. the rest is all nil nil. So uh, Villarreal, Elche, Alaves, Real Sociedad and Eibar Valencia. Real Sociedad a little bit disappointing at the moment, but I guess the Europa League is also playing in there. I, uh, quick secret, I was looking at the Real Sociedad jersey uh, earlier on this uh, past week. But then I got the Maradona jersey from Napoli, so yeah. Or else I will enter my collection soon. So let's look at the table um, in uh, La Liga. And we have, even with two games less, Atletico Madrid top of the table. Uh, only two goals conceded, never trailing uh, this season. And remember, they had two draws early, early on where I thought, oh, Atletico is not looking good now. They are really picking, picking up steam. Everyone else uh, basically bowing to Atleti. Yes, we have Real Sociedad uh, also playing well, picking up points, but um, not quite convincing. Real Madrid still in the top four, but we have to look until ninth for Barcelona, although it's also deceiving because Barcelona has two games less. Um, and for that reason, I did the same thing as in the Premier League. I adjusted by games that we have a little bit of a better picture. And you actually see now how big the lead of Atletico Madrid is. I mean, 2.6 over 2.1 of Real Sociedad. And then Real Madrid with a game less, only at 1.8. I mean, it's a substantial lead that Atletico Madrid is enjoying at this moment. Barcelona in seventh at the current standing with the two games in hand. Yes. So if they keep kind of, kind of the average, this is where they would end up with. What I'm more surprised is that my model still has Barcelona in number two spot. That, that, that's why they're up there. Uh, from the feeling, I think Barcelona will have a hard time making top four if they continue down that road. But I guess the Champions League, we have to be winning, 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 winning. I think they're the only, unbeaten, the only team that has a perfect record so far in the Champions League. That's what keeps their rating a little bit higher than it probably should be. Towards the bottom, yeah, uh, well, the lead Celta gets a little bit out of it. Valencia actually uh, maybe enters now uh, the, con the conversation as well, uh, as does maybe Alaves, but it's also Suna. Uh, Real Madrid and Huesca and Elche, although they're flying high, still has a very low rating and that's why they're considered outsiders. Now, next weekend we will definitely see what uh, Atleti is made of. We have Saturday evening, the big Derby Matrilenio. That, I think, is the one that, that I would watch. We have also an interesting classic clash between Valencia and Atletic Club. That can go a whole long way of deciding the fates of the managers there. Uh, Getafe Sevilla sounds good, but Getafe is not all that great at the moment. Barcelona Levante, I, despite having said Barcelona having another uh, 
crazy game. I actually think that Barcelona will win this one in a rather um, convincing fashion. And the rest of it has another derby again against A bar. So, um, yeah. yeah, interesting stuff. Betis, Real, maybe a sleeper game in that one. We have to see. Moving to France. Uh, Marseille winning at Nîmes. We'll see Marseille is actually a quite good position in the table. PSG win gets finally back on the win winning ways. It was 1-1 and then Ken uh, makes a really nice goal. And then late on Mbappé in stoppage time as his 100th goal for PSG. I think in 137, something like that game. So rather, rather good rate. It's just not scoring in the Champions League. Lille with another big win. Uh, over Monaco, so Lille is kind of seems to be the first challenger there. Uh, da David and Jaziki by the 65th, you know, it's early first half of the second half. They get it out of the way, Monaco only getting a consolation goal late through Pellegri. Uh, other big results, I mean, not necessarily from the teams, but uh, Strasbourg getting a big win at Nantes, uh, giving them some breathing room, but uh, pulling Nantes down and then Lyon beating Mets uh, also kind of as expected so now in the table and here I didn't make any just, uh, just one but you can see Marseille has two game games in hand if they win those they're actually first so uh, not likely in a way but you know it can it could happen uh, PSG now having a two-point lead Lille hang hanging there and Lyon I think it's all the big boys are up there let's see if Monaco also can join them but at the moment the sleeper team here is definitely Marseille. Towards the bottom, Nîmes uh, is now... Nîmes, Lorient and Dijon are the, are the ones favored to go down. Saint-Étienne getting a little bit breathing room, but you know, I already see Nantes also climbing into the... Uh, siphon of relegation. Uh, next round, we have Marseille-Monaco. That's a very interesting game, I have to say. Let's see, and we have, of course, late the big one between PSG and Lyon. Also very interesting and little Bordeaux slipper game, I would say. In Portugal, I owe you two midweek results. I mean, first one the, uh, from round eight, uh, Benfica won at Maritimo 2 1. And then on Tuesday, a uh, makeup game from round seven, Passos uh, beating Morarense 1 0, which at that point put we got a straight ta table, the table again, where uh, Sporting ahead of Benfica with a four point lead and Braga and Porto uh, right behind. Um, then, in the round that happened this week, um, I think uh, the, the standard result is uh, Porto 4-3 against Tondela. Yes, they get the win, but seven goals and three give up. That's rather uh, nasty. We have Family Car and Sporting playing out a 2-2 draw. So Sporting still not having lost, but dropping points. And Benfica getting a win against Passos. And uh, Braga losing at Belenenses. Also, Belenenses, probably. Also, not looking all that great. So, um... Sporting now only two points ahead of Benfica at the moment. Uh, Braga losing the spot to Porto, so it kind of gets a little bit clearer. Uh, for the championship, it's now Benfica and Sporting dropping now only in third position. Um, yeah, you gotta win, you have a lower rating. And for the Champions League spots, I mean, it's still a three way race, and that makes it kind of interesting. Well, that's my review for Western Europe of this weekend. Fill me in if you think you have more to say than I did this time. I know I didn't pay too much attention to these three leagues this weekend, but I think there was more action than the others. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you next week about La Liga and Liga and uh, Liga Nosh. Bye! Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.